Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in to tonight's episode of What is in the Night Sky this month. Tonight, I'm going to be taking you through a beautiful tour of the night sky in the month of March, and we have some incredible objects to visit. So as always, let's buckle in and see what's really out there. So we're going to start this tour off within the realm of our own solar system and we're going to see what the moon and the planets are up to. Whereas both Saturn and Neptune are too close to the sun to be visible, Mercury is furthest from the sun on March 7th and it can be easily seen in the west about 15 minutes after sunset for roughly the first half of the month. Both a thin crescent moon and Venus appear above it on March 1st. Venus itself is losing ground against the sun and is rapidly dropping into the evening twilight. It'll appear within the same 10 by 50 binocular field of view as Mercury from the 9th with the two closest together on the 12th. March is the last month to observe Uranus telescopically, but Jupiter fares better. It lies close to Aldebaran and Taurus and remains observable for several hours after twilight ends. It's joined by the first quarter moon on the 5th and 6th. Mars is still shining brilliantly in the constellation Gemini, close to the stars Castor and Pollux. You'll find a waxing gibbous moon just a degree and a half away on March 8th. Use 10 by 50 binoculars to see the moon, Mars, and Pollux within the same field of view. Lastly, there is a full moon, known as a worm moon, in Virgo on the 13th, with a new moon occurring on the 29th. Now, speaking of the moon, this month we will be able to witness a total lunar eclipse. Without a doubt, the highlight of this month is the total lunar eclipse that occurs late in the evening on March 13th. It will occur in the early hours of the 14th for those living on the East Coast. The penumbral phase begins at around midnight Eastern Time. The partial phase starts at about 1 a.m. Eastern Time and totality starts at 2.26 Eastern Time. Now, despite the lunar eclipse occurring very early in the morning for those who live in the eastern side of the United States, this is a sight that you will not want to miss. You don't need binoculars to view it and you don't even need a telescope to view it. It is quite spectacular viewed simply with the naked eye, although binoculars and a telescope will surely enhance your experience. Now, speaking of eclipses this month, you will also be able to see a partial solar eclipse. If you live in the northeastern corner of the United States or Canada, you'll have the opportunity to see a partial solar eclipse at sunrise. Details will vary by location, but many will see a partial obscured sun as it rises above the eastern horizon. Those in this location of the United States may want to consider getting out their telephoto lens and or a solar filter, capturing an awesome time lapse of the sun partially eclipsed by the moon rising at sunrise over the horizon would be pretty spectacular. So those are the events that will be occurring within our own solar system this month. But next, we're going to head out way past our solar system and past our own galaxy. And we're going to be visiting two galaxies that are highly popular within the amateur astronomy community for both visual and astrophotographers. That's M81 and M82, the Cigar Galaxy and Bode's Galaxy. This pair of galaxies will fit within the same low-powered telescopic field of view, with some texture being visible on M82 in small scopes. However, you will need a mid-size or large scope to see anything of the spiral arms in Messier 81. Messier 81 and 82 are a great pair of galaxies to try out if you're new to astrophotography. These galaxies are rather bright, they're close together, and this pair makes an incredible photo. Next, we're going to bring the tour back within our own galaxy, and we're going to take a look at Messier 97, the Owl Nebula. Located just a little more than two degrees from Merak, one of the stars of the Big Dipper, it can be seen in a small telescope, but you'll need an aperture of around 250 millimeters or 10 inches and a high magnification to see the dark circular patches that give the nebula its name. Now, as for most planetary nebula, viewing them under dark skies is considered optimal, but the Owl Nebula is one that you can see in rather light polluted areas. Dark skies, though, will give you that added contrast boost so you can differentiate the different layers of the nebula itself and be able to pick it out from the background. 
So we are going to move on from the Owl Nebula now to a beautiful star cluster, the Beehive Cluster. Messier 44 is still seen in the evening sky in March. The Beehive Cluster is a fine sight in binoculars, while also providing a challenge for naked eye observers. Look for it roughly midway between Pollux and Gemini and Regulus in Leo. All right, so that is the end of our tour tonight for the month of March. We thank you so much for tuning in. If you've ever had the chance to view any of these objects in a telescope or even photograph them, let us know in the comments where you were, what kind of gear you used. We always love to hear from you. Be sure to like and subscribe so you don't miss any future High Point content. Thank you so much again for tuning in and clear skies.